Good morning guys and welcome to the much promised curved wall roofing tutorial. I am the Sam, the Bean is once again preparing for his singing musical debut so you may hear him practicing in the background. And I have 16 shapes here that I am going to practice roofing today. Now I'm not 100% confident we'll get a satisfactory roof on all of these, but at the very least you'll walk away with some knowledge and some things uh, to not do. I've numbered all of these shapes so you can use the pinned comment to quickly jump to whatever section you may need or to bookmark and come back to later. In case you didn't know, you can find these new curved rooms right here. We have the round room, the rounded room large, and the rounded room extra large. I am using the rounded room large for building today because my guess is it will be the most used size. My other guess for most likely use case scenario is going to be a round corner just like this. So this is where we're going to start. We finally have an excuse to use circular roofs. So I'm going to get it up to size and line it up here and drag out the eaves. Next, I'm going to take a gabled roof and rotate it so that the open side is facing the front of my build and pull it in until it hits where the curve begins. This should line it up right with the center of my circular roof and don't worry, we'll adjust the pitch in just a second. I'm also going to take a half hip roof with the open side facing the circle, make it as wide as the circle so that when you bring it in to match up, we can extend this eave and this one. Now we have a lovely curve on our roof. If I pitch it down, you can see it doesn't look too bad. All of the pitches are able to line up, the eaves all line up. So all in all for this shape, I recommend using three different roof pieces. Your circle, of course, a gable or half hip roof here and another half hip here. And it looks great when you put the normal color roof on as well. For this shape, once again, I'm going to start with a round roof, put it to size and place it. Bring out the eaves, copy and place. I'm also going to show you why I didn't go with a hip roof, which is because you just pull this out, it extends way over the corners. So that's why I've opted to use a gable. But you could also use a half hipped with the open side facing the front of the build or whatever side your curved walls are on, which today is the front. I'm going to bring this up to meet up with the middle of the circles like this, and then grab a half gable just like that. Once again, it looks kind of silly, but if we bring the pitch down, it doesn't look too bad. So this one will use four roof pieces, the gable in the back, two curved roof pieces and a half gable in the front to cover that gap right there. Now this is where things start to get complicated. We can start the same way by covering all of the curved corners with a round roof, but I have no good way to cover this sort of hole in the center. So what I'm going to do is draw a room like that. Now I can grab a half hip roof, size it up a bit here, drag it over so that it lines up with this circle, copy, rotate and place in this direction. Add a couple of half gables and then either leave it flat on top or finish it off with a nice hip roof. So for this one to keep the peak, you would use three circle roof pieces on the rounded corners, three half gable roof pieces on three of the sides, a half hip roof piece to cover that one square corner, and then using a room in the middle to raise up the last hip roof, put a hip roof on top to make it look like one whole cohesive roof. To keep the flat roof, you would just get rid of that top piece. And if you want the pitch down a bit lower, you can make this room be a platform and pitch all of the roof pieces down to match. If you would like more information on this technique, you can check out this video here, which is all about how to roof a mansard, which is pretty much just this. You can put a half wall on top to give the roof a little bit of a cap, and it will look slightly less ridiculous when you add the more normal color roof. Next up, we have this three quarter pure circle, which means I got rid of those straight walls on the sides, cut off on one side by a diagonal line. Now, the only way I can possibly think to roof this with a traditional roof piece is to simply use a circle and then possibly put a column or something over here. However, I also think this shape would be a great place to try and use some round platforms to create a flat roof. I'm going to copy this same shape and place it up top get rid of the ceiling and the walls, which will then turn this into a platform, which we can resize to our heart's content. If you want to learn more about using platforms for roofs, then you guessed it, I have a video about that too, which I will link here. I tend to like to make my platforms extend a bit when I'm using them for a roof, just because it looks more like a roof, but obviously it's up to you. This is probably how I would end up roofing this shape though. 
We are a quarter of the way through finding out just how many round room combinations can actually be roofed traditionally. If you've made it this far, please let me know by leaving a like, and if you're enjoying this content, don't forget to subscribe. I'm really hoping we can hit 100 subscribers by the end of the month, and right now we're at 98, so I know it's possible, and it would absolutely make my day if this video could push that number to 100. To be completely honest, I'm not sure if this one is going to be any more roofable than this one, since similarly it is three quarters of a circle, this one imperfect though because it has the straight walls still there, with one side taken off. We could once again just go with a circle and a column, a platform, or we could grab some circles and see what happens. Because we have these straight walls here, these corners will be sticking out. We can either fix that by dropping the circle and pulling out the eaves, like that, pushing in the wall of the room, or covering it with any one of these roof pieces. For in between the circles, we can use a gable. I'm using a half gable to cover up these corners. So this would be the three circle roof pieces, two half-hipped if you want to cover those uh, little bumps on the side, and two gables to bridge the gap between the circles. These next two shapes look pretty similar. The only difference is this one still has the straight walls and this one does not. I'm going to say you have two main options for traditional roofing on this one. The first being, you guessed it, a giant circle with the eaves drawn out and pitch dropped to compensate for having those straight wall pieces. Here's a little look at it from the side. Or you could copy and place four different circles, draw a room, and after lining up your circles with the room, grab your half gables and place them around your roof. Top it off with a hipped roof, or not. And you can adjust the pitch just like we did on this one by transforming this room into a platform and lowering the roof all around. So all in all, that would be four round roofs, four half gables, and one hipped roof, or just the big circle. I'm not even going to pretend to do anything fancy on this one. It's just a circle. While this may be the easiest one to roof, it is certainly going to be the most difficult shape to fill with furniture. So if you have any circular houses on the gallery, I'd love to see them, honestly. This oval is also going to be super easy. We are just going to grab a circle for each end and a gable for the middle. So in all, that's two circles and one gable. This one is basically just a curved oval, so we can actually roof it the same as the build we just did. We're going to start with a circle on either side and then grab a diagonal gabled to fill in the gaps. If you want to learn more about using diagonal roof pieces, I recommend checking out this video. One of the main issues with roofing with diagonals is that they don't quite align to the grid. And because of that, oftentimes the pitches don't line up, the lighting is a little off. So you can mostly see on this side, the colors on the shingles don't look the same and the eaves aren't going to line up. If you reset all of the eaves back to zero, they will line up. You can then kind of disguise the edges with a thick roof trim, although once again, it kind of looks weird. So all in all, Unless you absolutely need this shape, I recommend trying to reconfigure your build a little bit to make it easier to roof. This diagonal should be a little bit easier. We're going to start the same way, which is with, of course, a circle to cover this curved portion, and then either a diagonal gabled or a diagonal half hip roof. If you use the half hip roof, remember to make sure that the open end is facing toward the circle so that when you pull it together, you can make sure that it lines up perfectly. Once again, with this being on a diagonal, the eaves aren't quite going to line up, so unless you go with the platform, this is probably about as good as it's going to get. Okay, I did not think about this one when I built it. Um, let's once again start with circle, and I'm going to do a half hipped on this side, lining it up with my circle, of course. If I place a hip roof here, I can start using the diagonal half gable to cover this side and to avoid doing yet another mansard style. I'm going to pitch it down to create a slope off the side. Pitching down the rest of the roof leaves me with this, which wasn't quite what I was hoping to end up with, but at some point it's just impossible to keep all of the roof pitches the same. So for this shape, you can use a round roof on the curved portion. Lining it up with a half hip roof gives you the ability to use a hip roof on this side and a half gable here. I think the odds of this actually being the end shape of a house is really, really slim. So hopefully at least some of the joining techniques are helpful. But what do I know? I'm not you. All right, this one I think is actually going to be super simple. Do I even need to say starting with a circle anymore? And I'm going to throw down a hip roof over here and make it as large as possible without actually clipping through this circle, which is right there. 
I think my circle needs to be bigger. There we go. Right here, I'm going to use a diagonal gable roof, which I will line up with the center of the circle. And then on either side, you could use either a hipped, half-hipped, or gable roof. So all together, an intersection like this, it's going to be five pieces, a circle, a hipped roof, a diagonal gable roof to join them, and then two roofs of your choice over here, hipped, half-hipped, or gable. Now, three quarters of the way through the video is probably a little too late to mention this, but if you are new to building in general in The Sims 4 and want to learn the roofing tool a little bit better, I recommend checking out this video. It was the first one I uploaded to my channel this month, which has been all about roofing. It goes over the basics of each roofing type, how to manipulate them. I have a whole video on how to curve roofs as well, another one on diagonal roofs in particular. So if you're looking for more information on roofing, I have tons of videos and I'll link them all in a playlist at the end of this video. This one one's looking kind of lopsided and I'm going to make my life a little bit easier by evening this out. Alright, once we have our circle down, I think our main issue is going to be this back corner here. I'm going to start with a hip roof again and I made the circle slightly smaller so that these peaks are the same height, which just makes it a lot easier to cover this gap with our diagonal half gable. Sorry, diagonal gable. If you're wondering why I use so many hip roofs, it is just because it's really easy to place them. They're one of the easiest roofs to line up consistently with one another, and then you can always go in and change up your roof pieces later. So I am placing two hip roofs here and here. Now at first glance, this does go against my valley rule, discussed in this video up here, uh, but because overall it is still trickling down and this is a really weird shape, I'm going to let it slide. Using diagonal half hip roofs on the side lets us line up with this side of our hip roof without clipping through. And all together, this roof will use three hip roofs, two diagonal half hip roofs, one diagonal gable, and one circle. So this one, I'm going to do what I instinctually thought of to do, and then we'll try to roof it with traditional roofing pieces. Because my first thought was pushing it in the sort of modern eco-industrial direction with a platform over here, but I know that's not everyone's taste. So let's see how we could roof this with a circle. To do this one, I'm going to use the classic when in doubt use more roof pieces technique. We will start with a circle and a hip roof. Now the hip roof doesn't clip through unless you bring the eaves out. So instead of bringing out the eaves on this whole roof piece, I'm going to add smaller roof pieces underneath around the edge and use those to extend the eaves. This will work even when pitched down to a more normal looking height. And then we can just grab our little diagonal gable roof to fill in this gap. So it looks like two or three roof pieces, but is in fact seven. With a circle, a diagonal gable, the main hipped portion, and four smaller hip roofs along the edge to give the illusion of the main roof actually having eaves. For this one, I'm going to start with my circle and then just grab a gable for either side. Three pieces of roof for an easy elbow macaroni noodle house, which I know you're all just dying to build. The real shape everyone's dying to build is probably this one, the heart. We can finally actually get a decently shaped heart. Now, I did go back and forth a bit on whether I wanted to add this little straight piece here and I decided to keep it. It is probably going to make roofing it more difficult though. Yay! In theory though, I should just be able to grab these two circles, two diagonal half cables, and then do my best to get all of the eaves to line up. Now, I was struggling to get this to line up and it's just refusing and then I remembered I think I used a different size uh, curve for these so I'm going to rebuild this with the same size curve I used for the other ones and see if that fixes it. Alright, I had to scooch macaroni noodle over but this is a heart with the rounded room large curves which I've been using for the rest of the roofs and it's starting to look like depending on the size curve you use may determine whether or not your diagonal roof pieces are going to line up properly and possibly even the straight ones. Uh, if you want a part two to this video with more shapes and troubleshooting, let me know in the comments below. I already have videos scheduled for the rest of this month, but I am more than willing to drop a couple extra ones on these curved walls because I didn't know we were getting these when I started recording. I'm starting with the two circles again and the diagonal half hip roof. So aside from dealing with our classic diagonal roof piece issues, it looks like this is lining up much better. And unfortunately, our extra roof piece trick will not work with this because we'd still have to use diagonal pieces, which would still make the eaves not quite line up. So to get that heart-shaped roof with traditional roof pieces, if you don't want to use a platform or whatever, I recommend going with two circles and two diagonal half gables. Unfortunately, due to the nature of the sips being on a grid, you cannot create a heart with the round rooms 
um, the other way so that these roof pieces would be straight because the curves have to be on a specific angle. Maybe that'll be a feature in the future, I would love that. But for now, this is what we've got. Here are those numbers once again for a quick reference using the time codes in the pinned comment. Thank you so much for watching this. I've recorded for almost two hours getting all these roofs sorted out, so if you haven't already, please subscribe. I would love to hit 100 subscribers. And if you think you have me beat on any of these roofing techniques and you can do it better, let me know in the comments below. I have a lot of editing to do, so I will see you all very soon. Bye!